Hello, welcome back to Dr. How. Today I'm going to be talking about how to create a regeneration effect in Blender. Now, as you can see, this regeneration effect that we have here, it's really just a particle system that's em emitting uh, particles that move around. So, but that, and it doesn't look particularly impressive, but it is the basis for um, all of these regeneration effects that they use in the modern series. Of course, you can add more of these um, particles and change the appearance of them so that you can end up with more complex effects. So if we start off with a Blender default Blender file, you actually start off with this uh, cube here, which we can get rid of by just hitting delete. What we're going to do is we're going to add an empty object, which has got an image in it. And I'm just going to zoom in with the scroll wheel on the mouse here so that we can show uh, what you can do to load the image. So if we just open up the, an image there. Now I've created a morph already. I'm going to hit A to select everything and then open that image. Now that on its own won't actually display until you hit this auto refresh and then you can actually see the morph happening. I'm going to use the keypad keys to move around there and then I'm going to zoom in with the mouse wheel and then just hold down control and use the keypad to move around. So you can see that that morph is now happening there. We're actually going to align the camera properly here by going to the camera's transform and I'm going to set these to zero. Let's move the camera to the origin there. And then we'll set the all of the rotations to zero as well. And then I'm going to move the camera upwards. Now if we zoom out there, you can see that the camera is now pointing downwards. And if we hit keep at zero, you can see what it's what it's looking at. And I'll just zoom in there a bit. Now the camera itself is the wrong shape. What we really want to be doing is rendering exactly the PAL coordinates. Now we select the empty object. It's called empty because it won't actually render in, in the final output. So it's really just a guide for where we're going to put the particle emitter, which is going to be a circle on top of it. Let's just resize this thing. Um, we can resize it by going to transform, scale it with S, move it, grab it and move it with G. Hit S again, get it approximately the right spot. It doesn't have to be perfect because, it, as I say, it won't render. Now we're going to add an object over the top, which is going to be a circle. It's going to be a mesh. We're going to add a circle. Okay, so what we're going to do is add a particle system. Now the particle system, if we just emit from the vertices, what you'll end up with is particles appearing around the outside there. Hit escape to get out of that mode and escape to get back to this view. We're going to add a material first. It's a halo material. We're going to change the color to yellow and we're going to set the alpha. Uh, I'll just set it to 0 0.1 so it's reasonably visible and I'll change its name to gold and you can see that that in that particle system we are now using gold there. If we render that we can have a look at see what that looks like. Again it's only appearing at the vertices. What we really wanted to do is make the objects these particles appear at it from the face but actually it only appears in the middle there because it doesn't actually have a face yet. So what we can do is add a face. 
Now it's very important. You can select, deselect, de and select the vertices here. You have to have to make sure you've selected all of the vertices when you add a face to this polygon. Otherwise, you end up with just a partial face. But if we do that, you can see it fills the entire space there. And now what we can do is omit from the faces. When we render, you'll see that there's all these little particles appearing in the middle there. And this is, this is the kind of thing we want to have happen. They're actually falling in towards the center. And the reason is gravity. Um, if we actually look at this from a different, a different angle, render that again, you can see that the, the particles are appearing there and they're falling away because of gravity. And so they'll actually tend to appear to go towards the center of the face. We really want that to be around the other way. So what we could do is move the camera so it's underneath by setting its Z location down there. We can rotate X or Y 180 degrees. So now we're looking upwards. And we have to actually reverse this image now. Um, so if we go back to the empty object, what we want to do is mirror it. Hit enter. And if we hit keypad zero, you'll see it's, it's moved up there. So we'll hit G to grab it and move it back down. Uh, and if we if we render that, the particles should now spread outwards. And you can see that they're spreading outwards because they're falling towards the camera because of gravity. All right, if we were to view it in this, this view, we can see that happen. Particles are falling downwards, so they'll appear to spread outwards towards the camera. So that's what we want. So now I'll hit keep at zero again. We actually have to distort the vertices to, to match the face there. There's a few ways of doing this. We can hit A to deselect the vertices, but then we can't see them. So what we have to do is select that circle and we can use circle select to select particular. Oops, we could have pressed A to deselect then hit C and then we can actually select particular parts of the uh, vertices there. Hit escape and then we can actually hit G to grab and move them. Or you can actually, uh, if we just deselect them, you can actually right click vertices and move them around. Right click and then left click, right click, make left click. So after we've moved all of those vertices around, we can check that it looks looks reasonable. And then what we're going to do is render that out. So if we have set uh, a good uh, output location here in the render tab, then we can simply just start rendering. And you'll get this glow appearing and you should get the files appearing. Now, something we haven't done is we haven't turned off the sky. Why did we not turn off that? We must turn off the sky, otherwise you end up with everything looking gray. So if we render that again, right now we've got it transparent and we've got this glow appearing. So we can just let that run. And assuming that we've done that, we can have a look at one I've already prepared. So if we open up the morph here, import an image sequence, um, we'll also add the, the glow. This is one I've pr prepared earlier, import the image sequence. Now, if you actually just look at the glow, it doesn't look like much. But if we put the image on underneath, suddenly you can see that this is working quite well. And that's how you, you get it into KDN Live. And then you can simply save that off, uh, it render it, 
and you've got now a little sequence, uh, a regeneration sequence. So that's that's the basic idea. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Howe. I'll talk to you later. Bye.